Hello everyone. I'd like to begin this presentation about the Language Data Commons of Australia by first acknowledging the traditional owners of the lands on which I'm making this recording and working, the Yagara and Durable peoples, and to acknowledge uh, their custodianship of the land and to pay my respects to their uh, ancestors and to their descendants. I'm making this presentation on behalf of a large number of researchers uh, stakeholders and organisations, and I'd like to thank all of them for their contribution uh, to the plans for the Language Data Commons of Australia. Australia is uh, sometimes thought of as an English-speaking country, and while it's true it's an important lingua franca uh, in society, um, Australia is actually a, a massively multilingual society, and it's situated in one of the most linguistically diverse regions in the world. There's more than 300 different immigrant languages uh, spoken in Australia, including English, in addition to hundreds of indigenous languages as well. Um, and in Australia's region, in the Pacific Southwest, uh, actually more than a quarter of the world's languages are spoken. Um, and Australia is also home to some of the world's oldest indigenous cultures, uh, which stretch back, as we know, more than 50,000 years, which is uh, much longer than um, what we think of as often as ancient civilizations like uh, Egypt and so on. Um, and work on languages in Australia uh, has resulted in quite large collections of this language data being collected and amassed. Um, but the current situation is a lot of those collections are either underutilized or even some of them are at risk. So the aim of the Language Data Commons of Australia is to federate discovered access to uh, these language data collections, particularly ones of high strategic importance uh, for Australian researchers and communities. In order to start working on that, uh, that means we not need to start working on a national governance framework, uh, which is in partnership with Indigenous Australians. Uh, we need to develop a comprehensive language data access policy framework, uh, which involves issues of uh, cultural, uh, legal and, and moral and ethical uh, considerations. Uh, we need to also develop a shared technical infrastructure and shared standards uh, across different institutions, which are custodians of language data. It involves building a portal uh, for discovery uh, and, and culturally, ethically and legally appropriate access to this language data. And finally, it's about engaging researchers and stakeholder communities in more systematic use of our national cultural heritage. The aim of the Language Data Commons of Australia has Research Data Commons project is, is to work towards this larger vision of a, a national language data commons for Australia. Um, so we're working to do this by capitalising on existing infrastructure. So there have been a, a number of past uh, investments from ARC, uh, from the Australian National Data Service, and uh, from the Australian Research Data Commons, and also from NECTA. Um, a particularly important uh, piece of infrastructure that we're working uh, with is, is Paris which has long established itself as a really uh, vital part of Australia's research infrastructure for languages. We're also um, doing our best to work with our current uh, investments from ARC and ARDC. This includes uh, investments in the ARDC platforms program for the Australian Text Analytics platform and also through the ARDC uh, data partnerships program for which uh, we have some initial investment in LDECA. And finally, we're also working uh, with uh, the ARDC LEAF funded Nyunga platform which uh, Nick Tiber is leading from Melbourne. Um, and so capitalising on this exist, existing infrastructure, uh, our aim is to be uh, securing vulnerable and dispersed collections. Um, and so what we mean by securing is that uh, collections are preserved in, in, in digital, digital objects, so they're, they're durable, um, and also we're trying to secure access uh, to, those, um, uh, to that language data. And thinking about the latter, of course, uh, there's an increased focus on community rights and access to data. So not just uh, for a narrow group of linguists, but for researchers and communities more broadly. Um, finally, our aim in bringing uh, this language data together is to improve analysis environments, uh, which allow for new research outcomes. Um, it's probably fair to say that the potential of a lot of language data collections is still quite, uh, still remains untapped because of limited access to tools and, and to uh, skill sets uh, and to infrastructure to carry out um, this work. 
Um, there's also uh, new language data sources, uh, including uh, the, the World Wide Web, uh, social media, which are providing vast tracts of data. Uh, we need infrastructure to enable large scale analytics of that kind of data. The proposed uh, work package is in the LDECA Hass Research Data Commons project, they're divided into four main streams of activity. In, in the first uh, stream of activity, the focus on, is on securing language data collections. So what we mean by securing is both uh, uh, securing data and associated metadata itself as preservable digital objects, but also about it's also about securing access uh, to that data in culturally, legally and ethically appropriate ways. Uh, the second set of work packages come under stream three, which is, a, uh, is about aggregating language data collections. Um, so this is about enabling researchers and communities to draw from different sources of data because we know different language data can be held across different institutions and sometimes that data can be very difficult to find unless you know where to look. Uh, the third stream of uh, activity involves improving uh, our text data analysis environments. Uh, so what we mean by text data analysis, sometimes when people think about text analytics, uh, they think about written uh, text, but of course, uh, for people interested in language, uh, text is not just written text, it also includes spoken text. Uh, it also includes video recordings, signed text, and so on. So we're looking to provide ways for researchers to make best use of computational um, and also uh, NLP methods and tools uh, in, in undertaking, undertaking language research. Finally, Stream 4 uh, is a range of work packages which are focused on strategic partnerships um, and also engagement um, and training of our researchers and communities who have, a, who have an interest in language data in Australia. We're delighted to be working on the Language Data Commons of Australia within the broader HAS Research Data Commons and Indigenous Research Capability Program because we see an enormous lot of synergies between uh, what we're working on in this particular initiative and this broader uh, program of, of work. Uh, so one point of uh, synergy uh, that we can see is around authentication and authorization for not only individual researchers, but for research groups and also importantly for communities. Um, a second really important synergy that we see is uh, our commitment to a community-driven approach to access and governance of language collections in Australia. And finally, another point of synergy is uh, data intensive humanities, uh, which we think uh, complements uh, a focus on data intensive social sciences. Uh, and that's where we see uh, the shared need for working with um, other partners within the HES RDC and Indigenous Research Capability Program on APIs, on large scale text analytics tools and so on. We see uh, a lot of potential there as well. There are a number of anticipated uh, impacts of the Language Data Commons of Australia project. Uh, this includes establishing sustainable workflows for securing language data collections of national significance. Uh, we're aiming to democratise access to Australia's research linguistic heritage, so it's not just the preserve of a small group of uh, researchers. Uh, we're working to demonstrate uh, how we can work with uh, our Indigenous partners on balancing research needs with preserving community rights for language collections. Um, we're aiming to uplift the digital skills of researchers and communities working on languages um, and also develop the technical infrastructure that's required to analyse language data collections at scale. I would like to highlight the contributions that language research uh, can make to STEM and health disciplines and also open up the social and economic possibilities of Australia's language data for translational research. Finally, uh, we see Al Zakar as positioning Australia as a major international contributor of language data and digital research infrastructure. There is no national language data commons without a community. Uh, so in, in our project, collaboration communities are built into uh, the centre of what it is we're doing. Um, in terms of uh, how, how we want to go about 
uh, encouraging collaboration and engagement with our, uh, our stakeholder communities. We're wanting to model the benefits of a computational approach to research disciplines that use text data, which are, are not restricted, of course, to the humanities and social sciences, but spread across uh, other disciplines in the natural sciences and the health sciences as well. Um, we'd like to be guiding the development of reference research applications across multiple disciplines through providing access to language data sets and training in new analytical tools. And we're committed to enshrining the right of communities to control access, contribute to and govern the collections uh, which they have a stakehold in. Um, we're also working towards sustainability. Uh, so one of our work packages is focusing on exploring how we can work with our, uh, stewards of language data collections in universities and also in GLAM institutions as well to ensure long-term preservation of those collections. Um, sustainability is also reduced around trying to reduce the total cost of operating, maintaining and upgrading infrastructure through maximal reuse of existing tools and platforms, um, and also trying to achieve cost efficiency by demonstrating the utility of our services across a range of domains and applications. The project itself um, has a nominal uh, uh, amount uh, from AREDC and we're matching that with cash and in-kind co-investment uh, from our collaborating organisations. On behalf of the LDACA team, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen to our presentation. Uh, we look forward to your questions and your feedback on our plans, uh, the project plan, um, both at the roundtable and any feedback uh, that you can provide uh, through the AREDC website. And for those of you who come, I'll look forward to seeing you on the 21st of September.